A very good morning to all of you and I welcome you all to Ansarkari. So in this video, we'll be analyzing the important articles for the UPSC Civil Services Examination. So without any delay, let's start with the analysis. So finally, we have the new foreign trade policy. And obviously now, uh, what are the provisions? What are the changes compared to the earlier policy? All of that becomes very, very important. What are the targets that have been set? under this policy, all of that is very important now. So let's understand and have a look at what are the changes and what are the aims of this policy. So the first aim is tripling the goods and services exports by 2030. And there is a, like a, only one time amnesty scheme that has been uh, announced and there is uh, no other major scheme, which is a component of this policy. So it also focuses on lowering the cost for the smaller firms and offering swifter clearances. So basically, it is made more simple and easy to make it. It has made some changes. And the smaller firms have their cost reduced so that they also become much more competitive and efficient and are able to uh, earn good amount of profits. So such steps and aims are a part of this policy. And this we've already seen that it aims at tripling the exports to $2 trillion by 2030. And right now they stand at $760 billion. And this policy also allows for the adjustments based on the world trade and industry feedback. So basically feedback uh, would be taken into consideration and uh, accordingly changes and amendments would be made further. Then uh, export promotion initiatives includes encouraging international trade settlements in Indian currency. And this topic is in news mein bahut time se chal raha hai. Isko humne detail mein bhi discuss kiya hai. We have discussed the Washtro accounts. Ki Washtro accounts ke through kaise aap international trade kar sakte ho in terms of Indian rupee. Kaise pura process uh, it can be initiated and all of uh, related to that. So basically export definitely promote karna right now so it is a challenge because globally we are seeing that there is a, a global slowdown jo demand have that is also slowing down because of economic slowdown in specifically the advanced world so it the policy definitely export promotion ki baat karegi if you're talking about the foreign trade policy so aapke mind mein yaan achhe ki kaun se steps hai jo government le sakti hai in order to promote the exports then further looking uh, into the details of it. And when we compare the performance of India's trade under the previous policy, we saw that India's exports, they were around $435 billion in 2015-16 when this policy, the previous policy was announced. And we saw that the uh, exports, they grew nearly 75% to an estimated $760 billion. And then we also have the director general or uh, directorate general of foreign trade also. So that's there. And new policy, it will uh, have no sunset date and uh, it will be tweaked based on the emerging world trade scenario and the industry feedback. So just say globally change, uh, globally change a shape, hongi change hoti jayengi accordingly, we'll be also making the changes. And obviously feedback would also be taken into consideration. And there are no major new schemes that have been introduced in this policy barring one a time amnesty under the existing advanced author, uh, authorization and export promotion capital goods schemes that allow the imports of the capital goods subject to specified export obligations. Then moving on further, Donald Trump, he's uh, expected and likely to surrender next week. So that is, uh, we're seeing that he's indicted by grand jury, is likely to surrender by next week. So, so there's been investigation going on against him in his personal and political and business dealings and an abrupt jolt to his bid to retake the White House. So... These are some of the charges that were leveled against him.
So Gujarat High Court sets aside CIC order seeking information on Prime Minister's MA degree, and they also fine the Chief Minister of Delhi. So he raises questions like, doesn't the country even have the right to know how educated the Prime Minister is? He vehemently opposed showing the degree in court. And why was that? So Gujarat High Court, it has set aside a 2016 order of the Central Information Commission, which directed the Gujarat University to provide the details of the Prime Minister's MA degree to Delhi's Chief Minister under the Right to Information Act. So what becomes important for us to know or more regarding this thing is that is there a right under this act to know about to get the information of such nature when we are talking about uh, the prime minister of india and apart from that you need to find out more about the central information commission its composition and its nature whether it is a statutory body a constitutional body and if it's a constitutional body then under which article of the constitution so that's there so violates privacy. So on Feb 9th, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta for the university contended that no student's degree can be disclosed under, under RTI as it violates the privacy of the individual. So the reason that was given was key, such type of information, uh, it would lead to violation of your right to privacy and which is definitely your fundamental right. So there is section 8 uh, of the RTI Act, which talks about certain exemptions. So you need to read more about section 8. And apart from that, the other information that uh, I just told you guys. So famed U.S. Museum to repatriate 15 stolen Indian artifacts and mm -hmm. such types of news, they definitely, they keep uh, appearing in the newspapers from time to time. So you need to know that, is there any international convention as far as this thing is concerned and whether India is a signatory to it or not? So uh, right now we are seeing that 15 of the stolen Indian artifacts, they are being repatriated from USA to India. So apart from that, we need to know if there is like uh, whatever, like uh, the 15 uh, artifacts are being imported to India. Uh, basically, they're being given back to India because they, they, they that is Indian property. So you can uh, like find out about the list and uh, have, uh, you know, some idea regarding or which kind of artifacts are being given back to India. So if we try to find out from this article some important details regarding them, so let's have a just cursory look. So the, there's a sculpture which date back from the 1st century BCE to 11th century CE and includes terracotta, copper and stone works on it. And among the antiquities is an enthralling sandstone sculpture of Apsara, the celestial dancer. And there is 33.5 inch tall sculptures from Madhya Pradesh which date back to mid 11th century CE and it is worth 10 lakh dollars, which is around rupees 82 crores in Indian currency. 
And there is a 1st century BCE ceramic pot from Chandra Ketu Gad, which is an archaeological site in Kolkata. And there is a stone bust of Kamdev, which is the god of love from the second half of the 8th century CE. And then we have Swetambara enthroned Jinnah with, uh, with attendant Yaksha and Yakshi belonging to 11th century CE. They are also part of the antiquities. Coming to the editorials, <laughs> so India's semiconductor mission might need a compass. So semiconductor mission ki bahut bar baat hoti hai. We know ki why India is focusing so much upon the domestic manufacturing, domestic availability of these semiconductor chips. And in ka kya usage hai, kaun se sector mein they are used. So, uh, one semiconductor laboratory, it was set up in Mohali 1983 by the then central government with the vision of creating an electronics ecosystem in an era when we had Caltron and Uptron and Webel. They were fledgling entities in a pre-liberalized India aimed at consumer electronics. So, 1980s ke time pe bhi emphasize kiya gaya tha importance di gayi thi to the semiconductors and the domestic manufacturing. However, we had then the later up we had opening up of the Indian economy in 1991. We had those structural reforms. So uh, the shocks of opening up the market for the consumer goods uh, back then and a fire that broke out in 1989 at this facility, it dashed the hopes. So us time pe in reasons ki se, we couldn't basically develop further and expand the semiconductor manufacturing in India. And Sadi Sat, we're also collaborating with USA when it comes to semiconductors production. So that is also one thing. So uh, globally, we are basically trying to diversify our partners. And domestically, also, we are focusing upon indigenization and domestic manufacturing so that we gain self-reliance as far as semiconductor chips is concerned. So the way forward is that the institutional framework for such a shift in the focus already exists with the transfer of the SCL back to the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So this is the ministry which is handling things regarding to the semiconductor chips. And apart from that, Earlier, uh, basically, this SCL facility of the semiconductor laboratory, which was in 1983, back then it was under the Department of Space as a part of the new semiconductor policy. So, so sorry. After like 15 years, now uh, this laboratory is within the Department of Space as part of the new semiconductor policy that was announced in December 2021. So proper policy here on uh, semiconductors in India. And you can find out more about this policy. Thode siske features, if you read it, it, it can benefit you. And mains may aapko zyada fayda ho sakta hai if you have certain idea. And prelims may be... Uh, Basically, it direct this policy ke upar bhi question aa sakta hai. So, uh, you can find out more about it. And apart from that, alternate approach could be to leverage human and capital assets at the SCL to build on what exists in a targeted manner to jumpstart the semiconductor mission by taking advantage of the recent technological breakthroughs in a class of semiconductors that do not need advanced lithography equipments. So, if we focus on capital assets and on basically human capital, on basically uh, skilling them and reskilling the already uh, workers which are working in this sector, so that definitely benefits. Hai. So, 
that's there. So the recent efforts by India Semiconductor Mission to open up the subsidies to the global small and medium-sized enterprises in the upstream supply chain, they are welcome because an existing facility like the SCL that will benefit from this step. So in order to promote, we are also providing subsidies to the global uh, enterprises in the upstream supply chains. But this is not enough in itself unless it is coupled with incentives defined uh, in this article. And it also upgrades the targeted at different sets of players. So different sets of players, different areas, maybe within the semiconductor or manufacturing area. We need to have different targets and jo, uh, steps. We have seen that government has taken steps or what other approaches hai that government can leverage off apart from providing subsidies. Definitely, all of them are very important and the stakes are definitely high as a lack of clarity and inaction. It may lead to India completely missing out on the semiconductor fabrication bus yet again unless there is a course correction on the incentive targets. So 1980s maybe we have tried it, but back then we failed because 1990s ke decade maybe we had the structural reforms and uske se thoda sa opening up of the economy. So we didn't have focus nahi kar pai. And then there was uh, the fire incident just ke wajah se again it has other emphasis nahi ho paya and jo bhi humne socha tha waise cheeze they couldn't materialize that way so right now of uh, having clarity and taking actions having policies and then also monitoring things and agar kuch changes karne hai doing that is very important so that this time at least we are able to meet our targets and the ambitions that we have set for ourselves A long and rocky road to economic recovery. So IMF, it has provided $3 billion of package for Sri Lanka. Because we know that Sri Lanka has an economic situation, chal rahi hai, kya, there is political instability also. So IMF, ne finally, it has provided them the bailout package worth $3 billion. And now when the government implements the conditions stipulated by the fund, it is Sri Lanka's poor who will bear the brunt. So the other challenges obviously poor section ko face karne hai and obviously kuch conditions hai iske bare mein humne pehle baat kar chuke hain ki kuch conditions hoti hai uske baad hi imf provides you with the money with the sum and wo conditions agar aap implement karne jaoge jo ki obviously aapke paas aur koi option koi alternative nahi hai to uska again ki jo challenges face karne padenge sabse zyada difficulties that would be by the poor section so this article it is entirely like talking about Sri Lanka. So itna zada detail me jaane ki zarurat nahi hai. We just need to know ki economic situation ki reason ki wajah se Sri Lanka me hui hai. Uske baare me hum bahut discuss kar chuke hai. Ek line me aapko pata hona chahiye. And that's there. And history me agar hum jaye to India se related. Obviously we had the civil war just me India ka role tha. And kuch connections definitely the, to uske baare mein aap thoda aur search kar sakte ho. So NATO is, it is open to stronger ties with India as per a US envoy. So given the geopolitical situation abhi globally jo global order chal raha hai jo global situation hai uske backdrop mein agar hum ye statement dekhe to it is very very strong statement and bahut hi important ho jata hai so the ministry of external affairs had last year confirmed that the two sides they have maintained contact for some time and Right now, we are seeing that a leading U.S. official has said that North Atlantic Treaty Organization, it is open to deepening ties with India. So speaking at a virtual press briefing on Friday, their ambassador, who is U.S. envoy to NATO, said that Russia should withdraw from Ukraine and that NATO is watching China-Russia relations in the backdrop of Russia's continued military operations in Ukraine. 
सो डेफिनेटली वॉर तो चल ही रहा है एंड साथ ही साथ हाउ थिंग्स आर बेसिकली दे आर अगेन getting reordered different countries apne relations with other partners they are reshaping them so uska ek example hai ki uh, how russia and china they are coming closer to each other and definitely india ke upar kya uske implications ho sakte hain and western world ke upar kya implications ho sakte hain europe ke upar kya implications ho sakte hain iske bare mein hum pehle baat kar chuke hain so ये बहुत सारी चीजें दे दे गेट रिपीटेड सो आपको बस ये डिफरेंट पर्सपेक्टिव आपको अपने माइंड में रखना इम्पोर्टेंट है अदरवाइज थिंग्स आर मोस्ट ऑफन दे आर रिपीटेड इन द न्यूज पेपर बिकॉज हम चीजें एवरी डे बेसिस पे वी आर एनालाइजिंग एंड कवरिंग दम आप सो लेट्स ये इंडिया का क्या रिस्पॉन्स होगा टू दिस स्टेटमेंट सो दैट्स देयर एंड इंडिया ने तो दे हैव कैप्ट इन टच इन रूजल एट डिफरेंट लेवल्स फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम नाउ सो ऐसा नहीं है कि इंडिया बिल्कुल ही कॉन्टैक्ट में नहीं है विद द नेटो वी आर इन टच विद दैम बट उससे ज्यादा कुछ नहीं है सो दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ आर कॉन्टैक्ट विद वेरियस स्टेक होल्डर ऑन वेरियस इशूज ऑफ म्यूचुअल इंटरेस्ट सो नेटो राइट इट इज नॉट इन्वाइटेड इंडिया फॉर द मीटिंग जो कि अभी होने वाली है ऑन फोर्थ एंड फिफ्थ ऑफ अप्रिल there is going to be nato ministerial and usa official uh, however informed that it will see participation from japan and australia so japan and australia are going to participate so these are also the countries uh, country members of quad so only india is left out and other three members they are they will be participating this time in nato ministerial so scheme for refugees from pakistan it hits a rough patch so financial aid was announced by the center in 2018 jisme hindu and sikh families who had migrated from west punjab after the partition they say that scheme is mired in corruption and officials are demanding bribe so basically scheme may be we are seeing ki जो बेनिफिशरीज है दे आर सेइंग कि ऑफिशियल्स दे आर डिमांडिंग ब्राइब्स वो करप्शन चल रहा है इसमें भी सो द स्कीम फॉर वेस्ट पाकिस्तान रेफ्यूजीज इट हैज हिट अ रोड ब्लॉक एज दे क्लेम कि जम्मू एंड कश्मीर ऑफिशियल्स दे आर डीलिंग दिस प्रोसेस जिसमें द रेफ्यूजीज दे नीड्स टू दे नीड टू बी प्रोवाइडेड विद अ सर्टेन काइंड ऑफ फाइनेंशियल एड सो मेंबर्स ऑफ पीओ के रेफ्यूजी फ्रंट दे रेस लोकेंस ड्यूरिंग अ प्रोटेस्ट इन जम्मू and there are around 5764 eligible families 70% are dalit families 900 claims have been settled so far and uh, under this scheme rupees 5.5 lakh is provided as assistance uh, as per the family not one one person or one individual and that's there so so documents such as refugee cards when they entered india from pakistan's sial court in 1947 so basically kuch individual kuch individuals say who were not able to produce their original documents obviously uh, unko ye uh, they can't claim this amount so uh, you need to first get verified and kuch documents original documents aapko provide karne padenge in order to get the financial aid uh, under this scheme so according to center the cert in uh, it may be exempted from giving information under the rti act so the waiver will allow the agency to reject the applications for the information even on policy matter so cert in is the computer emergency response team of india and ye basically jo cyber crimes hote hain unko prevent karne ki koshish karti hai so uh, it is being said ki जो आर टी आई एक्ट है उसके अंडर जो आप सिटीजन यू कैन गेट इन्फॉर्मेशन सो उसमें इसको कवर नहीं किया जाएगा एज पर देंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सो द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कोर्स एंड ट्रेनिंग इट हैज रिव्यू द प्रपोजल फ्रॉम द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी टू इंक्लूड सर्ट इन सर्ट इन इन सेक्शन इन सेकेंड स्केड्यूल टू दर टी आई एक्ट विच डील्स विद एग्जेप्टेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लाइक 
द सेंट्रल ब्यूरो ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड द बॉर्डर सिक्योरिटी फोर्स सो बहुत सारी इंपॉर्टेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन इस एक पैराग्राफ में आ गई सो एक 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 करके उठाते इन्फॉर्मेशन को सबसे पहली बात की सर्ट इट इट इज एट द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी दूसरी बात की आर टी आई का जो सेकेंड स्केड्यूल है उसमें सारी एग्जेमटेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की लिस्ट है एंड उसमें ऑलरेडी सी बी आई एंड बॉर्डर सिक्योरिटी फोर्स दे आर अ पार्ट ऑफ द सेकेंड स्केड्यूल टू दी आर टी आई एक्ट सो इवन सी बी आई एंड पी एस एफ दे आर नॉट कवर्ड अंडर दी आर टी आई एक्ट सो दैट्स देर एंड इंटर डिपार्टमेंटल कंसल्टेशन दे आर ऑल्सो गोइंग ऑन रिगार्डिंग दिस प्रपोजल सो फाइनल डिसीजन अभी देखते क्या रहेगा ऑन दिस एंड द एग्जामेशन इट वुड अलाउ सर्टन टू रिजेक्ट एनी एप्लीकेशन फॉर द इन्फॉर्मेशन इवन ऑन द पॉलिसी रिलेटेड मैटर्स सो मतलब कोई भी इन्फॉर्मेशन फिर आप नहीं सीख कर सकते हो फ्रॉम सर्ट इन बॉडी द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड This is significant क्योंकि body it has issued directions on ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ऑफ अप्रिल की विच रिक्वायर्ड योर वर्चुअल प्राइवेट नेटवर्क प्रोवाइडर्स एंड क्रिप्टो करेंसी फॉर्म टू प्रिजर्व द डेटा ऑन ऑल यूजर्स सो अभी रिसेंटली एक अनाउंस किया गया था इस चीज को and the directions they are being challenged in delhi high court and the government it has argued that absolute anonymity online it is not acceptable so several major vpn providers they have pulled their servers out of india arguing uh, ki jo directions hai they would compromise uh, the users privacy on the internet so jo ye virtual प्राइवेट नेटवर्क प्रोवाइडर्स बॉडी बॉडीज है उन्होंने अपने सर्वर्स इंडिया से बाहर शिफ्ट कर लिए क्योंकि उनका मानना ये है कि अगर उनको यूजर्स का डेटा दे वुड हैव टू मेंटेन तो इट वुड बी कॉम्प्रोमाइजिंग विद देयर राइट टू प्राइवेसी सो ये कुछ काउंटर रीजन है विच आर बींग पुट फॉरवर्ड बाय दीज नेटवर्क प्रोवाइडर्स and jo certain body hai that is the computer emergency response team of india it coordinates with the public and the private organizations in india when there are cyber incidents like data breach hota hai or ransomware attacks hote hain so us case mein this body it coordinates between the public and the private organizations and it also issues uh, advisories for the software vulnerabilities as guidance for organizations so a uh, kuch uh, guidelines be issue ki jati hai so that safety is maintained and apart from that when deliberations on exempting cert in from the rti act they were first re uh, reported last may delhi based internet freedom foundation said ki uh, on the one hand cert in it warns our logs and non compliance with which will lead to one year jail time but on the other hand does not want to be transparent to the citizens in return so uh, inka manna ye hai internet freedom foundation ki ek uh, taraf to certain keh raha hai ki aapko consumers jo users hain unka data aapko maintain karna padega and dusri side jab aap ye bol rahe ho ki it would be exempted from rti to jo citizens aur certain ke beech mein jo transparency hai आप उसको कॉम्प्रोमाइज करने की बात कर रहे हो बेसिकली यू आर नॉट बीइंग ट्रांसपेरेंट विद द सिटीजन जहां तक की जो भी डेटा सीकिंग जो भी डेटा शेयरिंग की बात आती है सो दिस इज व्हाट अनदर थिंग इज रशिया प्रोमिस टू डीपन स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप विद इंडिया देखते हैं ये कितना सच है क्योंकि चाइना इज ऑल्सो मूविंग क्लोजर टू वर्ड्स रशिया सो कुछ उससे भी चैलेंजेस हो सकते हैं बिकॉज ऑफ दैट ग्रोइंग क्लोजनेस बिटवीन रशिया एंड चाइना सो रशिया इट इज डिस्क्राइब इंडिया एंड चाइना बोथ ऑफ देम एज दी फ्रेंडली सोवर एंड ग्लोबल सेंटर्स ऑफ पावर एंड इट इज वोट टू गिव इम्पोर्टेंस टू द कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव डीपनिंग ऑफ टाइज एंड एनहेंसमेंट ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन विद दैम सो रशिया जाता है दोनों इंडिया एंड चाइना के साथ दे इट डीपन इट्स टाइज बिकॉज इसके लिए दोनों ही इम्पोर्टेंट है and russia said it places special emphasis on increasing the volume of trade with india strengthening investment and technological ties and ensuring resistance to destructive actions of the unfriendly states and other alliances and in one of the documents russia has underlined that it will build on a privileged strategic partnership with india so ye kuch areas hai jahan pe china expects to deepen its ties with india 
China poses the challenge to rules based order in Indo Pacific. So, this keyword is used to rules based uh, international order. And this statement is coming from the German envoy. So, Indo Pacific, if we talk about the same Kaku Islands, which is a dispute hai between Japan and China, then Taiwan is one of the issues, which is the USA is party to it. Apart from that, Basically, China chata nahi hai ki koi or country uh, ki closeness bade with Taiwan. And apart from that, jo China artificial intelligence, oh, sorry, artificial intelligence keh rahi jo artificial islands bana rahe in Indo-Pacific. That is another thing. And jo nine dash line hai, jo baki countries uh, territorial waters ke upar, they have their rights. Uske upar bhi, uh, China is, uh, in a way, it is asserting through its nine dash line. Just me, uska manna ye hai ki jo, jo bhi, uh, part nine dash line ke under aata, usme China ki sovereignty hai. So, ye kuch issues hai. And apart from that, aapko pata nuchi ki kwan si bodies banai ge ye quad ek ho gaya. And then we have I2U2, usme. Indo Pacific related to Nanya, but that is there. We have AUKUS, just may Australia, US, UK, they are a part. So, likewise, you can find out more about uh, other important bodies if I am missing any. So, WHO says ki there is highest proportional increase of COVID cases in India. So, the variant. Just give just cases are increasing right now. It is the XBB.1.16. And this is a new Omicron variant. So it is responsible for the spike. And this is between Feb 27 to 26th of March. But Abita hospitalizations and death ke instances they have not increased. So Abhi situation we cannot say ki bahut zada fearful hai, but <laughs> Delhi government is also prepared. Uh, yesterday they held a conference key. The government is fully prepared to deal with any such instant uh, in incidents of, you know, incidents or event of spike, sudden spike in the COVID cases. But definitely a concern to ye hai ki COVID cases, they are increasing. So Australia seeks diversified market for lithium exports. So lithium ki agar baat kare, recently Jammu Kashmir ki Risi district mein hume lithium reserves uh, discover kiye the. So that is very important jab hum ba battery manufacturing ki baat karte hai. And obviously uh, jab hum ye bhi dekh rahe hai ki electronic industry increase ho rahi hai. We are seeing ki electric vehicles, they are, their demand is also increasing. So that is why lithium ki importance increase ho jati hai but um jahan tak ki australia ki baat karte hai to it is seen ki uh, it is trying ki diversified countries may it exports lithium so the country it is the world's biggest exporter of the metal and with most of it is going to china so maximum of jo lithium australia ka hai it is going to china and uske wajah se china ki dominance Obviously, no doubt China ki dominance hai in this area in battery manufacturing ki baat kare. Kyunki maximum China mein ja rahe to obviously China ke paas monopoly and dominance hai. And world ka biggest exporter of lithium is Australia. So, ye kuch important facts ho gai. And apart from that, uh, So that is their Malab Australia try karaki diversified countries go it exports lithium. So that jo China ki dominance and monopoly power hai, wo bhi thodi kam ho sake. So Russia might put the strategic nuclear weapons in Belarus, says the leader. And this is along with the part of Russia's tactical nuclear arsenal and uh so, this recently decision liya gaya tha. So, the strategic nuclear weapons such as missile-borne warheads would pose an even greater threat if Moscow moves them to its allies' territory, that is Belarus. So, jo Belarus ki strategic position hai, jo uski geographical position hai, wo ek important factor hai ki kyu Russia ne Belarus ko hi choose kiya. And then historical ties bhi agar hum dekhe between Russia and Belarus, so they are also good. 
सो ये कुछ रीजन है एंड ये डिसीजन बहुत ही सडन लिया गया बाय रशिया क्योंकि इवन अदर कंट्रीज जो यूक्रेन को सपोर्ट कर रही हैं तो उसके कॉन्टेक्स में दिस वॉज अ वेरी सडन डिसीजन विच वॉज टेकन बाय रशिया सो न्यूक्लियर थ्रेट एक बहुत बड़ा कंसर्न हो गया इन दिस रशिया यूक्रेन वॉर सो इसराइल भी सीरिया के अंदर एयर स्ट्राइक्स कर रहा है सो वहां पे भी सिचुएशन इज वेरी अनसर्टेन एंड वॉयेंट सो इसराइल हैज कैरिड आउट एन एयर स्ट्राइक नियर द सीरियन कैपिटल अर्ली ऑन फ्राइडे एंड दिन स्टेट मीडिया रिपोर्टेड दिस वॉज द सेकेंड अटैक नियर डोमेस्टिस इन द लास्ट टू डेज एंड एज पर मिलिट्री सोर्स द स्टेट मीडिया रिपोर्टेड दैट इसराइल फायर्ड स्प्रेज ऑफ मिसाइल जस्ट आफ्टर मिड नाइट एंड देर वर नो डिटेल्स अबाउट द कैजुअलिटीज येट सो इस एरिया की जोग्राफी हमारे लिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट हो जाती है सो यू कैन ओपन योर एट्रेस इन मैप्स एंड यू नो हैव अ क्लियर आइडिया कि कौन सी कंट्री कहाँ लोकेटेड है कौन सी कंट्री किसके साथ बॉर्डर शेयर करती है सो so, इस टाइप के क्वेश्चन uh, पहले भी पूछे गए हैं दे कैन अगेन कम अप बिकॉज ये कुछ एरियाज है जो न्यूज में बहुत ज्यादा आ रहे हैं सो यू के इज गोइंग टू ज्वाइन द ट्रांस पैसेफिक पार्टनरशिप ट्रेड ट्रीटी सो वी आर एट आर हार्ट एंड Uh, we are at our heart an open and free trading nation that is uk and this deal to join the cptpp demonstrates the real economic benefits of our post brexit freedoms and the british prime minister rishi sunak so you can see in the picture and he believes ki brexit ke baad uh, because they have the freedom to take the decisions in their own interest so this is one of the decisions that they have taken to join the trans pacific partnership trade treaty so iske bare mein thoda sa agar aap aur find out kar loge to you can get benefited out of this uh, like direct information nahi aayegi but wo information aapko kahin pe answer dhoondne uh, mein help kar sakti hai and right now uk accounts for around 13% of the global gdp so that is the share and the contribution and so the british government said ki this deal would mean ki more than 99% of the british exports including for uh, for the key markets such as cheese cars chocolate and machinery gin and whiskey they would have zero tariffs so for the matlab trade ko thoda aur aap easy transparent एंड लेस रिस्ट्रिक्टिव बनाने की कोशिश कर रहे हो सो यूएस अफर्म टाइज विद इसराइल एंड वॉन्ट नॉट टू ट्रिगर टेंशन सो इवन इसराइल और पैलेस्टीन के बीच में एक अलग ही इशू है सो यहाँ पे भी इस रीजन में भी वी आर सींग की सिचुएशन इतनी ज्यादा सर्टेन एंड स्टेबल नहीं है क्योंकि एयर स्ट्राइक्स होती रहती है एंड अभी हमने देखा इसराइल और सीरिया के बारे में भी देन सीरिया और तुर्की के बीच में एक अलग इशू है सो आपको थोड़ा पता होना चाहिए कि क्या मेन रीजन है सो नेटो चीफ सेस की फिनलैंड इज गोइंग टू बिकम अ मेंबर ऑफ नेटो सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द latest addition to it and it is expected that the membership could be formalized in the nato meet in brussels which is going to be on 4th and 5th of april so let's see whether finland is going to join nato or not coming to the business page core output it rose by 6% in february so production however it fell 7.8% sequentially from the january's level so production kam hua hai compared to the january's level with growth for the first month of 2023 revised upwards to 8.9% and fertilizer production led the expansion in the output with a 22.2% surge so fertilizer production increase hua and definitely russia ukraine war ki wajah se bhi fertilizer ki जो प्राइजेस थे वो भी इंक्रीज हो गए थे क्योंकि रशिया इज वन ऑफ मेजर सप्लायर्स ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर सो डोमेस्टिकली अगर फर्टिलाइजर प्रोडक्शन इंक्रीज हो रहा है तो वो डेफिनेटली प्राइजेस को कम करने में हेल्प जरूर करेगा बट मेजर प्रोडक्शन भी इसी सेक्टर में रिकॉर्ड किया गया बट टोटल अगर हम देखें आउटपुट एंड प्रोडक्शन तो वो कम हुआ है कंपेयर टू द जनवरीज लेवल
So core sector, it slows down. Combined output growth for the eight sectors that accounted, that sorry, accounts for 40% of the index of the industrial production, it slowed to a three month low. So this data is repeated when there is uh, any data regarding the core sector. So first of all, you should know which eight core sectors are. उस पर डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन आ सकता है एंड वेटेज ऑफ जो भी कोर सेक्टर्स है उसका वेटेज इज 40% इन द इंडेक्स ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन सो आप अगर आप ये भी याद रखोगे कि इट इज लेस देन 50% तब भी बात बन जाएगी बट आपको पता होना चाहिए एटलीस्ट सो so, सारे जितने भी एट सेक्टर्स हैं दे सो प्रोडक्शन कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ऑन मंथ ऑन मंथ बेसिस फ्रॉम जनवरी एंड कोल स्टील एंड इलेक्ट्रिसिटी आउटपुट था the growth has eased from january's double digit pace to 7 to 8.5% range mein uh, coal steel or electricity mein kam hua hai growth and cement output increase hua hai compared to january's levels and fertilizer uh, production to definitely increase hua hi hai so that's there and core sector ki growth se hame basically pata chal jata hai ki jo naam se it is uh, very clear ki core sector of the economy hai jiske upar baki sectors ki bhi growth dependent hai and obviously then puri economy ki growth to dependent hi hai so agar pehle step pe hi uh, growth slow down dekhne ko mil rahi hai to jo baki sectors hai jo upstream sectors and industries hai usme bhi hame स्लो डाउन देखने को मिल सकता है सो दैट इज व्हाई कोर सेक्टर की जो ग्रोथ है वो हमारे लिए इतनी इंपॉर्टेंट है समझना एंड उसको पीरियोडिकली एनालाइज करना सो आवर करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट इवन दैट नैरोस डाउन तो ये अच्छी न्यूज़ है सो इट हैज डिक्रीज्ड टू नाउ 2.2% ऑफ द जीडीपी इन द थर्ड क्वार्टर ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ईयर 2023 सो अक्टूबर नवंबर दिसंबर 2022 की ये बेसिकली सीएडी की वैल्यू है दैट इट हैज डिक्रीज टू 2.2% ऑफ द जीडीपी एंड प्राइवेट ट्रांसफर जो रिसीव्स थी उसमें हमें मैसिव ग्रो देखने को मिली एन इंक्रीज ऑफ 31.7% फ्रॉम year earlier period so ye ek major reason hai and net fdi wo decline hui hai so in the financial account net fdi decreased to 2.1 billion dollars and net foreign portfolio investments they have also recorded the inflows of 4.6 billion dollars as against the outflow तो नेट आउटफ्लो हुआ है व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट द एफपीआईज इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड ये ट्रेंड चला ही आ रहा है सो so, जब से टाइट मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी इज बीइंग इंप्लीमेंटेड एंड वी आर स्टिकिंग टू दैट सो वो मेजर रीजन है कि व्हाई अ फॉरेन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स दे आर मूविंग आउट एंड दे आर एग्जिटिंग फ्रॉम द इंडियन कैपिटल मार्केट एंड जो फिजिकल डेफिसिट है इट हैज टचड 82.8% ऑफ द फुल ईयर टारगेट इन फरवरी इटसेल्फ सो जो सेंटर्स फिजिकल डेफिसिट इट टचड 82.8% ऑफ द फुल ईयर टारगेट एट द एंड ऑफ फरवरी अकॉर्डिंग टू डेटा फ्रॉम द कंट्रोलर जनरल ऑफ अकाउंट्स एंड इन एक्चुअल टर्म्स द फिजिकल डेफिसिट और द गैप बिटवीन द एक्सपेंडिचर एंड रेवेन्यू कलेक्शन ड्यूरिंग द अप्रैल टू फेब पीरियड इट स्टूड एट 14.53 लाख करोड़ रुपीस सो फिजिकल डेफिसिट इन कंपेरेबल पीरियड जो पिछले साल वाला पीरियड था वाज 82.7% ऑफ दैट ईयरस रिवाइज्ड एस्टीमेट इन द बजट सो मार्जिनली थोड़ा सा ज्यादा है इस बार बट इट हैज रीच्ड 82.8 परसेंट जो कि काफी ज्यादा है बट कोविड 19 के टाइम से अगर हम कंपेयर करें तो उससे इट इज लेस सो ग्रेजुअली ऑब्वियसली ये ग्रेजुअली ही कम होने वाला है सडन तो इसमें डिक्लाइन नहीं हो सकता है बट वी कैन से कि हां वी आर डिक्रीजिंग इट इन अ वे सो दैट्स वन थिंग सो जो फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी अभी रिलीज की गई है जिससे हमने आज का एनआरएस स्टार्ट किया था इट मूव्स सेटिंग अप ऑफ ई कॉमर्स एक्सपोर्ट हब्स सो ऐसे डिफरेंट हब्स सेटअप करना सो दैट हम जो हमारे एक्सपोर्ट्स हैं उनको हम बूस्ट कर सके उनको और ज्यादा एक्सपोनेंशियली ग्रो कर सके इज वन ऑफ द स्टेप्स दैट इज दिस पॉलिसी टॉकिंग अबाउट 
सो ये बेसिकली ई कॉमर्स एग्रीकेटर्स जो है उनको हेल्प कर सकता है इन अंडरटेकिंग एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम स्टॉकिंग टू द कस्टम्स क्लियरेंसेस एंड प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ द रिटर्न्ड ऑर्डर सो उसको थोड़ा उस प्रोसेस को थोड़ा ईज करने में दे कैन प्ले एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल एंड जो हब्स हैं दे वुड आल्सो इंक्लूड अ प्रोसेसिंग फैसिलिटी फॉर द लास्ट माइल एक्टिविटीज लाइक लेबलिंग हो गया टेस्टिंग हो गया रीपैकेजिंग हो गया so एक ये प्रपोजल भी है विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस फॉरन ट्रेड पॉलिसी सो पी एम मित्रा इज बेसिकली सेटिंग अप ऑफ टेक्सटाइल पार्क ताकि जो भी टेक्सटाइल्स के प्रोडक्शन से रिलेटेड जितनी भी एक्टिविटीज हैं वो सारी एक ही जगह हो जाए सो दैट इवन द टेक्सटाइल सेक्टर बिकम्स मच मोर एफिशिएंट एंड कॉम्पिटेटिव एंड ऑब्वियसली ये कॉस्ट को भी रिड्यूस करने पे हेल्प करेगा सो जो फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी अभी रिलीज की गई है इट इट एक्सपैंड द एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन स्कीम टू इवन इंक्लूड दिस पी एम मित्रा स्कीम सो द ओल्ड एक्सपोर्ट स्कीम इट विल कॉन्टिन्यू टू इंक्लूड द एपरल सेक्टर विद सेल्फ डेक्लेशन दैट इज बीन एडेड so this is another thing and now let's move on to another newspaper so let's take a financial express first so our air traffic in india it is set to double in next 4 to 5 years as per the union minister for civil aviation and jo daily domestic air passenger traffic hai that is crossed the pre covid high and it is set to soar further and he says that in the first 65 years of independence we built 74 airports in india and in just the last 9 years we have built an additional 74 airports more so four more airports water drums and heliports so definitely jo hamara civil aviation sector hai that is expanding that is growing and that is also evident from the thing ki airlines ne jo aircrafts ke liye they have placed orders so that is pointing ki definitely activities they are expanding to that's why they have placed the orders for more and newer aircrafts so her so your stock broker it might charge more now so जो असबा है असबा लाइक फैसिलिटी फॉर द सेकेंडरी मार्केट सो आपको ये पता होना चाहिए कि प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी मार्केट उनमें क्या डिफरेंस होता है व्हेन टॉकिंग अबाउट द कैपिटल मार्केट एंड सेबी इट हैज रिसेंटली गिवन इट्स नोट टू अ ब्रॉड फ्रेमवर्क फॉर अब्सा लाइक फैसिलिटी फॉर द सेकेंडरी मार्केट ट्रेडिंग एंड फैसिलिटी इट इज बेस्ड ऑन ब्लॉकिंग ऑफ द फंड फॉर ट्रेडिंग इन द सेकेंडरी मार्केट थ्रू यू सो आपके फंड ब्लॉक किए जाएंगे जो कि बेसिकली अगर आप किसी आईपीओ के लिए अप्लाई करते हो तो दैट्स हाउ बेसिकली आपके उस पर भी फंड्स ब्लॉक किए जाते हैं तो उस तरीके से कुछ चेंजेस लाने की कोशिश की जा रही है जब आप सेकेंडरी मार्केट में अगर आप इंटरडे ट्रेडर हो सो दैट्स देयर एंड मूव टू रिड्यूस द ब्रोकर फ्लोट फॉर यू लाइक विद द इंटरमीडियरीज यूटिलाइज टू वेल द बैंक गारंटीज एंड डिपोजिट विद एक्सचेंजेस एंड ब्रोकर दे विल हैव टू इनोवेट टू फाइंड अदर सोर्सेज ऑफ रेवेन्यू जनरेशन so jo india ke services exports are they have already crossed 1 trillion dollars while we see ki jo merchandise exports hai they lag behind and our union commerce minister says he is confident that we will cross 2 trillion dollars mark by 2030 so definitely export sector ki agar hum baat kare in terms of services exports of india so usme uh, itna koi major challenges nahi hamare liye we have a surplus uh, when it comes to services exports services trade ki uh, hum export zyada kar rahe services compared to the import and उसकी वजह से भी जो हमारा करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट है वो भी uh, काफी हद तक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट रोल प्ले करते हैं सर्विसेज एक्सपोर्ट्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ नैरोइंग डाउन आर करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट सो कोर सेक्टर की जो ग्रोथ है वो हम ऑलरेडी देख चुके हैं एंड यहाँ पे इट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट कोर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंडस्ट्रीज so growth is mein kam ho raha hai we can say so 2022 mein it had uh, like increased very nicely but uske baad again sharp slow down aa gaya and further a or slow down aaya during october 2022 uske baad se we have again revived back but let's see 
कि आने वाले टाइम में क्या रहता है बट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की अगर हम बात करें तो इवन यूनियन बजट में भी दिस टाइम कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर के ऊपर काफी एम्फोसिस एंड एलोकेशन की गई हैं बट अब देखने वाली चीज यही होगी कि उनको इम्प्लीमेंट कैसे किया जाता है क्या वो एक फिक्स टाइम फ्रेम में कम्प्लीट किए जाएंगे प्रोजेक्ट्स या नहीं टू यू नो हैव एक्चुअली द रियल बेनिफिट ऑफ हैविंग दैट कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर एंड सेटिंग अप न्यू इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फैसिलिटीज इन द इकोनमी सो That's there and fiscal deficit भी हम बात कर चुके कर चुके हैं कि एटी थ्री परसेंट वाला मार्क इट इज ऑलरेडी अचीव एंड जो फिजिकल डेफिजिट का टारगेट है दैट इज सिक्स पॉइंट फोर परसेंट ऑफ द जी डी पी दैट इज सेट टू बी मेट एंड टैक्स रेवेन्यू इज ऑल्सो ऑन ट्रैक so during the first 11 months of the current financial year new tax revenues they reported uh, the net tax revenues they have reported a healthy growth of 17% even as we saw the non tax revenues they have reported a 20% fall so tax revenue may growth hui hai aur jo non tax revenues hai usme hame fall dekhne ko mila hai and again current account deficit ki bhi hum baat kar chuke hain ki it is been recorded at 2.2% of gdp in third quarter of the financial year jo ki end hua hai so aaj se next financial year bhi start ho chuka hai that is from 1st april of this year and it would be up till 31st march of the next calendar year so current account balance ki yahan pe data bhi hame present kiya gaya hai so you can understand ki pehle uh, ऑब्वियसली जब हम फाइनेंशियल ट्वेंटी वन की बात करें तो इट वाज पॉजिटिव बेसिकली हमने सरप्लस भी रिकॉर्ड किया है ऑफ टू पॉइंट फोर परसेंट सो ये कोविड नाइनटीन के टाइम पे ही था जब लॉकडाउन से हम इतना ज्यादा इंपोर्ट नहीं कर रहे थे तो वो एक मेजर रीजन था कि वाई वी वर एबल टू रिकॉर्ड ए सरप्लस एंड ये भी आप फाइंड आउट कर सकते हो कि क्या इससे पहले हमें इंडिया ने कभी सरप्लस रिकॉर्ड किया है इन करंट अकाउंट बैलेंस और नॉट एंड उसके बाद भी हमने एक और बार रिकॉर्ड किया ऑफ पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट ऑफ द जी डी पी एंड उसके बाद तो इट इज ऑल इन डेफिसिट सो कंपेयर टू द प्रीवियस क्वार्टर इट वॉज एट माइनस फोर पॉइंट फोर परसेंट सो माइनस मतलब कि इट इज डेफिसिट प्लस मीन्स इट इज पॉजिटिव इट इज इन सर प्लस सो कंपेयर टू द प्रीवियस क्वार्टर वी कैन से हमने जो करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट है उसको और कम किया है so that can be one takeaway from this thing moving further सो फॉरन ट्रेड पॉलिसी अभी रिसेंटली रिलीज की गई है तो आज हमने सबसे पहले इसके फीचर्स के बारे में बात किया बट आने वाले टाइम पे ऑब्वियसली इसका क्रिटिकल एनालिसिस करना वुड बी इम्पोर्टेंट सो वो भी हम करेंगे जब हमारे पास एक अच्छा सा आर्टिकल होगा सो विल बी टेकिंग दिस थिंग अप इन डिटेल एंड सो शेडो बैंकिंग के बारे में क्लैरिटी होना इज इम्पोर्टेंट सो आर वी रियली वर्ड अबाउट शेडो बैंकिंग और नॉट एंड डोंट लुक एट चाइना सो दाइज ऑफ द यू एस ए इज लेवरेज फाइनेंस मार्केट इट इज बिगर वरी देन चाइना इज बलूनिंग डेट पाइल सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट शेडो बैंकिंग वी थिंक ऑफ चाइना सो विच इज वन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड मोस्ट इनडेटेड नेशन एंड लेंडिंग बाय द कंपनीज दैट डू नॉट ओन अ banking license it has reached 50 trillion yuan or about 42% of the gross domestic product according to the moody's investor survey so jo uh, companies aisi hai jinke paas banking license nahi hai but still they lend some money so that is crossed around 42% of the gdp uh, jab hum china ki baat karte hain and as per the recent banking crisis it is forcing investors to figure out where the next pressure point might be so recently abhi humne dekha two incidences jahan pe bank fail hue and that was recorded one of the largest after the 2008 9 financial crisis and obviously iski wajah se investors thoda satark ho gaye hain thoda sa we can say ki they are now uh, thinking twice before investing before putting their money in something and uh, obviously nazre ye bhi hai ki kaun se part of world mein ya kahan pe kis wajah se next crisis financial crisis ho sakti hai so that is one thing and
So at first glance, it's perhaps good news key banks, they have become less exposed to corporate America. And since the global financial crisis, corporate borrowing, it has shifted away from the traditional lenders, which are subject to the stricter regulations towards inter institutional and retail clients. So corporates who do borrowing karni hoti hai, pehle wo zyada dependent hai on the traditional lenders, on traditional banks, but now they have shifted and diversified their clients uh, to institutional and the retail clients. So the bank's market share that has fallen from more than 50% at the turn of the century to just 37% in 2021. And this is especially the case in $1.3 trillion leveraged loan market, which caters to riskier companies and private equities bind activities. So banks, they still arrange many of these loans. They provide information to the investors and then they put together a group of buyers. So this guessing game makes China a bit less scary by comparison because paranoid about uh, its huge debt pile, the government it, it is keen to assess banks' exposure to the uh, to the shadow financials, and further China's shadow banking it has been on a decline since the government's deleveraging campaign, which began in earnest late twenty seventeen. So the non-banks say they provide much needed financing to the companies which are shunned by the traditional lenders. So this is basically what do we mean by the shadow banking? Ki jin companies ke baad hai, kuch aise institutions jin ke paas banking license nahi hai ya kuch non-banks hai jo financing activities provide karte hai. So that is called as shadow banking. So uske wajah se kya risk hai kya basically wo organized sector ke under aate hai kya wo regulation ke under are they covered or not? Ye kuch important areas ho jate hai but agar uh, solely Sara pressure banks ke upar hoga, to that is also not going to be good. So, this case mein the author is saying ki shadow banking is a negative term. Nahi hai. So, we need to take it in a positive way and crackdowns aside, Beijing may be see ki uh, Beijing should also thank these lenders for helping to modernize China. So, China ki context mein hamne zada baat kari when we talk about shadow banking. So, nonetheless, while shadow banking, it often serves as a key purpose. It is important ki regulators, they know the contagion risk ji, jo shadow banking ki wajah se ho sakte hai and whether they might create chaos in the broader financial sector or not. So, in this sense, the US is known unknown is even worse than China's scary debt pile. So definitely, जैसे कि बोला obviously हर चीज के positives and negatives होते हैं. So shadow banking के भी जैसे कि uh, are they really covered under the regulation framework or not is very important thing and क्या financial sector को risk हो सकते हैं from the shadow banking activities या जो भी institutions they are involved in such kind of activities. So manufacturing sector may we are seeing rising employment. So enterprises with 10 or more workers, they had a higher rate of employment growth than the own account enterprises. And so factors other than the distress, very likely uh, we saw the easing of the labor laws which pushed up the manufacturing employment during this period. So labor laws introduced ke gaye the to ye mana ja raha hai ki un labor laws ki wajah se thodi jo flexibility aayi hai thodi easy ka hai thoda comfort aaya to the manufacturing units uski wajah se we are seeing ki manufacturing sector mein the employment rate has been increasing specifically in uh, in ones jinme 10 se zyada workers are there basically employment ki baat kar rahe and jo main cheez thi wo hum baat kar chuke ki kya reason hai moving on to now indian express so bengal mein specifically howrah mein violence dekhi gayi so political blame keep chal rahe hain yahan pe uh, कोई सीएम को ब्लेम कर रहा है कोई पॉलिटिकल किसी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी को ब्लेम किया जा रहा है सो राम नवमी क्लैशेस कम्युनल क्लैशेस देखे जा रहे हैं इन वेस्ट बंगाल सो 
सो ये भी हम देख चुके हैं कि एंटीकिटीज इंडिया में वापस लाए जाएंगे तो यहाँ पे हमें हमारे पास पिक्चर्स भी हैं सो यू कैन सी दिस इज सेलेस्टियल डांसर Uh, it is made up of sandstone and it is there from the 11th century madhya pradesh and then rattle in the form of crouching this is yaksh which is made up of terracotta coming from bengal then we have parikara which is made up of brass inlaid in silver and copper from gujarat then we have harvan floral tile so this is made up of terracotta coming from jammu and kashmir and so is uh, investigation may icij was also involved and uh new york ka jo supreme court tha unhone decision liya hai ki they would be again given back to india so let's come to editorial section first this is the vande bharat train highest train uh, train with the highest speed in india and new stretch has been inaugurated from rani kamlapati to hazrat nizamuddin so nation's 11th semi high speed vande bharat train it is capable of reaching peak speed of 160 kilometers per hour and it also has the vyangjan friendly washrooms seat handles and seat numbers in the braille script so it is pwd friendly also and it has automatic doors with sliding footsteps uh it has like air conditioning facilities also and it it is giving it is providing a boost to the reach to liquidity tourism and even the education sector it is equipped with kavach so kavach is the train collision avoidance system and it also has boarded fire control system so kavach pata hona chahiye aapko aa sakti hai term in the exam it has bio vacuum toilets with touch free features there is 100 Eighty degrees rotational seats in the train, and it also has installed CCTV cameras in the coaches, and also has passenger information systems in each coach. So these are some of the important features of the Vande Bharat train. So government is going to ease the rules on the construction around the protected monuments. So. this is there so currently construction up to 100 meters around the protected monuments that is completely prohibited so kisi bhi type ki construction activities within the vicinity of 100 meters around a protected monument abhi it is not allowed while an area up to 200 meters beyond the prohibited area that is regulated so 100 मीटर्स के बाद जो नेक्स्ट 200 मीटर्स का एरिया है वहां पे भी रेगुलेटेड वे में कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटीज की जाती है एंड दिस इज अंडर द एंशंट मॉन्यूमेंट्स एंड आर्कियोलॉजिकल साइट्स एंड रिमेन्स एक्ट एंड डेफिनेटली इट हैज सम स्ट्रिंजेंट रूल्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ द कंस्ट्रक्शन रिलेटेड परमिट सो आपको परमिट लेना पड़ेगा पहले जहां तक कि अगर आप uh, 200 वाले एरिया में कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटी की बात करते हो सो so, जो करंट रिस्ट्रिक्शंस हैं दे मे कंटिन्यू फॉर द यूनेस्को हेरिटेज साइट्स लाइक द ताजमहल सो जो साइट्स व्हिच हैव दिस यूनेस्को हेरिटेज साइट का स्टेटस जो अभी करंट रेगुलेशंस चले आ रहे थे जो करंट नॉर्म्स थे वो स्टिल इनके लिए अभी वही एप्लीकेबल रहेंगे सो so, किसी भी टाइप की कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटी और रिलेटेड एक्टिविटी इट इज जनरली परमिटेड नॉट परमिटेड इन दी प्रोहिबिटेड इन द रेगुलेटेड एरियाज अराउंड थ्री थाउजेंड सिक्स नाइनटी सिक्स प्रोटेक्टेड मॉन्यूमेंट्स इन इंडिया and uh, unless uh, you have a specific approval uh, which is taken from the national monuments authority and this system is set to change so kuch changes kiye jayenge so humne dekha jo unesco heritage sites hai unke liye kuch changes nahi hone wale hain and 
यहाँ पे कुछ साइट्स भी मेंशन की गई है कि इवन एज द गवर्नमेंट इट कैन ब्रिंग अबाउट लिबरलाइजेशन इन केस ऑफ मोस्ट ऑफ द मॉन्यूमेंट्स बट फॉर यूनेस्को वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज साइट्स इंडिया राइट नाउ इट हैज 40 ऑफ देम व्हिच इंक्लूड्स ताज महल व्हिच इज इन आगरा धोलावीरा इट इज इन गुजरात इट इज इन इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन साइट वी हैव रमाप्पा टेंपल इन तेलंगाना वी हैव रेड फोर्ट इन कुतुब मीनार इन दिल्ली सो ये कुछ यूनेस्को वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज साइट्स है सो दीस रिस्ट्रिक्शंस दे मे स्टे फॉर दीस साइट्स एंड सिंस कंस्ट्रक्शन दैट इज रेगुलेटेड एंड prohibited zones they may impact these heritage structures so unesco it has generally been uh, encouraging uh, such a concept to be complied with in the case of all world heritage sites so obviously heritage ko conserve karna is definitely very important and strict norms and regulations hona and ensuring ki they are implemented strictly is important so ab thoda aur find out kar sakte ho regarding the national monuments authority of india एंड इस एक्ट के थोड़े और फीचर्स अगर आप देख लोगे जो इम्पोर्टेंट थे एंड जो लिमिट है लैंड एरिया की लिमिट है वो हम देख चुके हैं एंड मूविंग फॉरवर्ड तो एज आई वॉज जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट कि हम क्रिटिकली एनालाइज करेंगे किसी आर्टिकल में वी हैव गुड पॉइंट्स रिगार्डिंग द न्यूली इंट्रोड्यूस्ड फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी सो दिस इज सेइंग कि और मेजर्स होने चाहिए इन ऑर्डर टू इम्प्रूव द ट्रेड शेयर ऑफ इंडिया जब हम ग्लोबल लेवल की बात करते हैं एंड देखते हैं यहाँ पे कुछ अगर पॉइंट्स हमें मिल जाए जहाँ तक हम क्रिटिकल एनालिसिस की बात करते हैं so definitely timing of this act uh, it is uh, of this policy is very important kyunki jo pichli policy thi usko extend kiya gaya tha and obviously hum usko zyada lambe time tak extend nahi kar sakte the so timing is right and right now globally bhi jo slow down dekhne ko mil raha hai in the demand in the goods demand so uske perspective se bhi timing is correct because kuch चेंजेस डेफिनेटली करने की जरूरत है जिसकी वजह से एक्सपोर्ट सेक्टर पे ज्यादा इम्पैक्ट ना हो क्योंकि ऑब्वियसली कुछ ऑल्टरनेटिव तो होंगे हमारे पास जिससे हम जो एक्सपोर्ट स्लो डाउन की बात करते हैं वो इतना ज्यादा लार्ज स्केल पे ना हो एंड इंडिया डेफिनेटली इट अकाउंट्स फॉर अ मिनिस्क्यूल पोर्शन ऑफ द ग्लोबल ट्रेड क्योंकि इट्स शेयर इन द ग्लोबल मर्केंडाइज एक्सपोर्ट इट स्टैंड एट अराउंड ओनली वन पॉइंट एट परसेंट एंड सर्विसेज में इट इज ओनली अराउंड फोर परसेंट सो इंडिया का ग्लोबल शेयर जो है वो बहुत कम है and there is considerable scope for improvement for the country so definitely share agar kam hai to potential uh, improve karne ka aur zyada expand and grow karne ka bahut zyada ho jata hai so this new policy needs to be supplemented with other measures so that uh, so as to boost uh, our trade performance and these uh, it can be from further lowering the import tariffs ensuring a competitive exchange rate to you know signing broader and deeper free trade agreements so free trade agreements already kuch countries ke sath we have already signed and we are in discussions with others so ek ye baat ho gayi and it is saying ki uh, we can also work more upon lowering the import tariffs and competitive exchange rates uh, bhi hame kuch advantage provide kar sakte hain so gamosa is a marker of the assamese identity 
and gamosa is the scarf you can see in this picture that they are wearing, wearing around their neck and there were protests in Assam this week after a newly formed literary body it called the Bangla Sahitya Sabha uh, in Assam used a ceremonial scarf which was created by sewing together half an Assamese gamosa and half a Bengali gamcha to facilitate the guests at a function in Guwahati. So you mean reason that why we recently protest way so kind of a fusion cardia of the two scarves one was uh, the gamosa jo assam ki identity hai and one was gamcha from west bengal so uh, ye thoda uh, logo ke jo sentiments hai unko hurt kar deta hai so they were basically these were the reasons ki kyu log uh, they were protesting so cultural significance ki agar hum baat kare gamosa it is fundamentally different from gamcha and equating the two garments by stitching them together it touched a raw nerve so the fulam gamosa it is considered a symbol of assamese cultural identity and it is revered for multiple reasons so uh agar hum gamosa ke importance ki baat kare its cultural importance to the assamese people so it has a deep symbolic value in assam uh, it is uh, religiously very important it is socially and culturally it has uh, a lot of importance when it uh, comes to the state of Assam. So socially bhi isko gift kiya jata hai as a symbol of mutual respect and solidarity and it also has a special place in the Vaishnav culture of Assam. That is the uh, axon, the main place of the worship. It is considered incomplete without uh, a gamosa. So you can see ki kitni zada importance di jati hai and kitni zada importance hai of gamosa be it social, be, uh, be it is cultural, be it is religious. So different areas may different importance hai, but uh, definitely uh, be it symbolic uh, importance social importance may mutual respect and solidarity have fashion of culture say it, it is related so agar gamosa it is not present so usko incomplete mana jata hai so there is a lot of emotion which is attached to gamosa and at key moments oh, for the Assamese sub-nationalism from the uh, Assam agitation of the early 1980s to the protest against the citizenship amendment in 2019-20, Gamosa, it has been worn by protesters as a marker of the Assamese identity. So, Assamese identity, say we associate Gamosa. And if we Gamcha, ki baat kare, which comes from West Bengal, so in contrast, there is no symbolism which is attached to Gamcha. So it is merely a, as a utility item uh, in household use. Gamcha ko use kiya jata hai uh, when it comes to West Bengal state. And it is a long scarf, which is called Uttaraya. And it is often used in the cultural programs and to welcome the guests in the Bengali society. So, it is not importance if we compare it to the Gamosa, we have talked about the Gamosa, so if you fuse both of them, if you join both of them, if you make a scarf, then definitely you can't... The social sentiments are definitely very minutely noticed. So, because of that, they will protest in Assam and definitely Gamosa, uh, it has also been given the GI tag. So uh, that's there and Gamosa, it has a national identity also, not just in Assam, but it also has a national identity. So people, they have strong emotion towards it and they respect and honor it. So it has its own distinct identity. So in this case, we have starting in the starting reason diya gaya that was ki aap uh, this would lead agar aap aisi information provide karoge so that would lead to the violation of right to privacy so this was the main reason which was given by the uh, court and aur zyada kuch hai nahi isme baat karne ka to ab thoda like uh, information commission ke bare mein thoda find out kar sakte ho uska composition uski uh, kya nature hai of this body so that would be more than sufficient for us to know 
सो ये सारे टॉपिक्स ऑलरेडी रिपीटेड है ये हम फाइनेंशियल एक्सप्रेस में भी और द हिंदू में सारे ऑलरेडी हम बात कर चुके हैं सो दैट्स ऑल फॉर टुडे थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग एंड सरकारी एंड देर इज ऑल्सो वन पीडीएफ लिंक दैट इज बीन शेयर इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स सो यू कैन गो थ्रू दैट एंड प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू आवर चैनल एंड ऑल्सो हिट द लाइक बटन फॉर दिस वीडियो इफ यू आर फॉलोइंग अस एवरी सिंगल डे थैंक यू सो मच